Good morning, everybody, and welcome to challenge number three, start sorting a container at a time. So um, it is Tuesday after Memorial Day, Monday, and I don't know about you ladies, but that really messed me up this morning. And so I have to say thank you to GoToWebinar for sending me the GoToWebinar reminder because at like 7.40 this morning, I'm sitting at my desk working away thinking it's Monday. You know, doing all my normal Monday stuff, and that little uh, reminder popped up. So, uh, thanks to go to webinar. I'm I'm here with you all today. Otherwise, I might have been getting a lot of emails saying, "Hey, where are you?" So, welcome. I wonder if we'll have a smaller group than normal this week because of that. So, let's get started. Um, oh, so for those of you who are new who are just jumping in, um, we do have a Q and A session at the very end of the webinar. If you think of questions while you're um, listening, please feel free to type them into your question box. Just know that we won't answer them until the very end of the presentation. Or we may answer it through the middle without even knowing it. So this week's winner um, also put up a nice post already on the, on the early post there. Candy Newsom Ford says, I've completed challenge two, so now I get to buy myself some Copic markers. Woo, you go, girl. I actually started twice as much paper as planned, so I am ahead of the game. I love the four-section system so much. Thanks, Tiffany Spalding, for coming up with such a great way to get and stay organized so we can use all the great stuff we accumulate. And so good job, Candy. Get the $25 scrap rack gift certificate. And um, great job. And really an important point at the end, um, so we can use all the great stuff we accumulate. And isn't that the truth? I mean, we've bought so much great stuff. And we don't actually use it because we can't find it. So I'm so pleased to hear people having success and um, really getting the value of, of what they've invested in. Then I had another post um, or email from Sarah Burns. And I don't think Sarah's on Facebook. This came to my email. So um, she might not be part of the Facebook group. I, I asked her if I could post some of this. But what, I was, what really, was really exciting to me about this or interesting to me, I guess, was that the beginning where she says, I started out with this decide later pile, which is something we talked about in the last webinar. And then in black, I decided if I couldn't make a quick decision about where it belonged, how I would use it, then it should just be purged. And I haven't regretted this so far either. So we did talk a little bit about that last year or last week. And, and so I thought this is a great sort of way to go, okay, I'm going to put this in the decide later pile. And then, no, I'm just going to put it in the purge box. If I can't decide now, then, then I probably don't need it. And then she also had some other, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but she had some other great suggestions where she um, has put little groups of products that she would doesn't need anymore together for friends that um, are scrapping about those things. I think one example of sports and one example of cruise stuff that's left over. And here's really kind of the, um, the important thing about this. So not only is um, Sarah able to get rid of stuff in her collection that, that she's not going to use, so that's going to do all kinds of great things for her. But she's bundling up these little gifts, and she says, I'm sending them out by snail mail. Um, and so when her friends get them in the mail, they're going to be like, oh, my God, that's so cool. You know, just a fun little thing. We rarely get fun things in the mail anymore because it's email or whatever. So a fun little treat for her friends um, in their little mailbox. Um, but it does make it easier to get rid of things that you won't use. And like this, thing, like she mentioned about the cruise, she'd come, she's done a cruise but um, doesn't have any plans to do one in the future. Um, so that, that alone is helpful to think, well, I don't have anything going on in the future. But even if you think you're going to take a cruise five years from now, the important thing here is to go, OK, that's five years from now. Five years are going to have a way you know, more hip or cool or different or new cruise stuff that I'm going to want to buy. So do you, want to, you don't want to spend five years flipping through cruise stuff because when the new stuff is out in five years, you're going to use it. So all of those little tips in her um, post I thought were great. So um, I'm also giving Sarah Burns a $25 gift certificate this week because I'm using and abusing her post here, and it'll probably stick with us for a while as some of the other ones have. So thank you for that, Sarah, if you're on board this morning. Now, if you're a winner, Candy and Sarah, and it's, sometimes it's hard for us to track down an email address, so please feel free to um, – to email us or Joanna at customer service at the .com to collect your prize if you don't hear from us. We try to put messages, private messages out on Facebook, and we only have about a 50-50 success rate with that. 
All right, I had to pause for a sip of coffee there. All right, let's get moving, ladies. Our webinar goal is to understand how to combine embellishments for easy access, to understand why combining your embellishments is the best way to get the most out of them, and then to begin the process of sorting all those things. And so this, um, this part of the challenge is the hardest part for a lot of people because we're going to tell you or I'm going to tell you to do something that everybody else tells you not to do. <gasps> Oh my goodness. And I want you to think about your silverware drawer. I know some of you have heard my little silverware drawer analogy before, um, but others haven't. So keeping things together you would use together is makes things so much easier, right? So take your silverware drawer, for example. Now, would you put your steak knives in a basket and your butter knife in a jar and your soup spoons hanging on the wall and your teaspoons, you know, in the cupboard? You wouldn't. You wouldn't spread them all around the kitchen for a couple of reasons. The first reason is it'd be a pain in the neck to set the table. And the second reason is it'd be a pain in the neck to unload the dishwasher, right? So um, when you're scrapbooking, if you're keeping things together you would use together, it's a lot easier to use those things and it's a lot easier to put things away when you're done using them. So our mantra here is combine and conquer. Keep things together we would use together. And if you have trouble doing that, because we're sort of trained by the crafting industry to separate everything out by the type of product that it is. So if you have trouble doing that, I want you to think about your silverware drawer and how much easier it is to use the things in your silverware drawer because they're all together. <clears throat> so get ready. Let's get ready. We're going to gather the things we need to complete the challenge. So sorting templates, if you didn't make them for paper storage um, because you use dividers in a, in a paper box, then you're going to need to make them for this challenge. Um, you need Ziploc bags, file folders, scrap rack pages, totes, whatever your organization's tool of choice is. You need to have a plan. Where will those things go once they've been sorted, stored, and cataloged? And I know the plan, the answer to that is into your get, into your organized only zone. So if you filled up your organized only zone already with all the paper you started last week, then you're going to need to make your organization, your organized only zone a little bit bigger this week to receive all of your new stuff. And then, of course, you want to have your purge box at the ready. And I know I talked about purge boxes, or I have talked about purge boxes a lot, but your purge box should now be a permanent fixture in your craft area. So um, even once you're finished with the challenge, if you keep that purge box right under your desk, and you know what I use? I just use a, a paper storage box under my desk because it's only three inches wide. Um, but it'll hold 12 by 12 stuff standing up. So it makes it really easy for me to throw things into that purge box um, as I'm working because it can handle just about any size thing. For, so keep your purge box handy. And then even as you're flipping through your scrap rack or digging through your Ziploc bags or whatever, when you pull something out that you go, I'll never use this, it's, if it's easy, you'll do it. If it's difficult, you won't. So keep it easy and keep the purge box handy. All right, sorting templates. I know we talked about them last week a little bit. I'm going to refresh here for people who are new or people, again, who use dividers instead of sorting templates. You should create them out of 12 by 18 paper if possible. Um, that makes it easy to stack 12 by 12 things on top of them and still see the guide down the side. Write the main category in the top left corner and your list of subcategories down the side beneath it. So here's a couple of examples of sorting templates. Um, so the picture on the left side is the first set of sorting templates that I ever did. And I made them out of 12 by 12 paper. And when you set a piece of 12 by 12 paper on top of something that's 12 by 12, you can't see it anymore. So the right side pictures are done on the 12 by 18 paper. Construction paper is typically 12 by 18. It's a little bit expensive. I just went to the dollar store and got a 12 by 18 uh, drawing pad from like the children's art supply section there. And that worked great. And it was only a buck. Uh, now, when you're done with your sorting templates, I wouldn't advise throwing them away. Uh, just fold them up, maybe fold them in half and stick them in a, a super tight single page or put them in the very back of your uh, paper storage boxes or something. And that way, if you decide to go through and sort something else later or you're going to do a resort a year from now, they're already there or they're already made up. You can use them again. But again, I guess they're only a buck, so maybe you want to redo them. Okay, get set. So you're going to spread your sorting templates out across the floor, over the furniture, on the countertop, wherever you have room. So you can see this gal, this is from a previous challenge. This is obviously her rainbow section. Spread out her sorting templates all over her dining room table, and then just started piling up things by color on each of those. 
um, sorting templates. And go. So easy. So sort just one container at a time or less. And now I, I guess I've ta I talked about this before last week. You're going to hear me talk about it all um, through the challenge. But it's really important that you um, sort, store, and organize, it, so that you complete the task so that you're not leaving stuff out all over the house for a week or two weeks or whatever, or taking the risk that you might have to scoop it all back up and start again because you need the space for something. So when I say sort just one container or less at a time, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm going to do some, we'll see some more of that as we go through. Once it's sorted, you want to group the items in each category by size, and that's important whether you're using scrap rack pages or you're using Ziploc bags or file folders, because obviously with scrap rack pages, you want to um, be the most economical you can with the pocket, so you want to put all the small things in the small, medium, large. But even if you're using Ziploc bags or file folders, you want the smaller stuff in the front. So when you open that file folder or look in that Ziploc bag, you get a good visual. Things are um, and easy, easily accessible because they're arranged by that height pattern. So it's important in either, no matter what tool you're using. Put each storage page bag or file folder into the appropriate section of your floor section system, and then start your next container. So there's a couple of things about this. I know I just feel like I hope I'm not um, you guys don't feel like I'm nagging you too much, but the beautiful thing about this is if you just sort one little pile of stuff into three or four, you know, sections of your four section system, or three and four feet, three or four themes, or whatever, and then you do another one, and then you do another one. Well, by the end of the week, the next time you sit down to scrap, you're going to have all this stuff that you can actually use. So, um, because it's already sorted and organized and easy to get to. So, um, just doing those little bits at a time, then when you start to work, the stuff that you've sorted, you can already use um, that organization system. So, I hope that makes sense. Sometimes I feel like I'm babbling. So, how will your four section system look? It's going to look all neat and tidy and easy and accessible. So, you're going to have all your alphabet stuff together. My mouse is going crazy. It's hard for me to click around. So alphanumeric, so we've got chipboard and buttons. Um, and then you're going to have your theme sections. You've got all your sports things together. You've got um, all your travel things together in these pictures. You can see that on the sports page in the lower left-hand corner of that um, thing. I've got an image from um, or a page from CK Magazine that I pulled out of the magazine because I liked it and folded it up and put it right in there with my baseball page that when I was ready to do those baseball pictures, I had all my supplies with me and also my magazine idea for what I wanted to do with that. So keep that in mind, too. Calendar section is going to get you through all the um, holidays and events that happen every year. And then finally, that beautiful rainbow section. Now, this is the part where people feel the most challenged because we are trained to keep everything separate, tile separate from Brad, flower-shaped Brad separate from you know, regular round brad and paper eyelets um, separate from really metal eyelets and stickers over here and glitter over there. And so um, this is the thing that people kind of have the most challenge with. So it might give you a little bit of a stomach ache, but I want you to try it. I want you to put all your things together. And then I want you to see how easy it is to use those things and how much more creative you become. Especially, excuse me, especially with the rainbow section. I'm just going to pause for a second and take a little drink of coffee. Especially for the rainbow section, because you might think this page needs a blue brad, and when you go to your blue section, you see that brad, and then you're finally, then you go, oh wow, I have these blue flowers or this blue glitter that I would have never thought about using because out of sight, out of mind. Well, now I'm using brads and flowers and glitter instead of just using that one thing. And so eventually your brain starts to change the way it thinks about designing. When you start looking at your pages, you, instead of thinking blue brad, you think this page could really use some blue. And then you go to blue and you see all these different products that you have. It also um, helps you use the knowledge that you have. So if you took classes on how to use flowers or glitter or um, you know glass tiles or whatever it is, um, and you may have totally forgotten about those products and those things um, because they were out of sight, out of mind. Well, now all of a sudden you're looking at those blue tiles going, oh, I know how to work with glass tiles. Those would be perfect on this page. You know? so, um, so anyway, it will inspire you on a number of levels, and you'll use more, more of your stuff that way as well. 
And don't forget your scraps, ladies. So those scraps are going to go right in there um, with the colors or the theme or whatever that you've got going on. They're going to go right into that rainbow section or the Christmas section or whatever it is, whatever it goes with. Wait till the very end to label things because you're going to probably move stuff around um, or combine or break apart categories. So you may have started out thinking the only sport I scrap like about is baseball, so I'm going to put it under B for baseball. And later you realize, hey, my kids used to play tennis or my husband plays golf or this. So I actually have five or six sports that I didn't really think about. And now you've got a sports section. So wait till the very end to label things. Um, if you're using a scrap rack, you're going to spread your dividers out evenly through your scrap rack before you label them, but two to three per binder. And then you can see in this image on the right side where we just use the stick on labeling tabs on this side. This is the sports section. So we have the major tab with sports, and then behind that is the stick on label tab on the pages um, for the individual sports. So if you're using a scrap rack, this is what it might look like. Now, this is a double base unit um, here, but you can kind of see the way it's open. That it's open to travel, and then you can see the rainbow section going kind of towards the back of it where things are sort of popping out in solid colors there. Okay, so I only want you to do one container at a time or less, and we're doing that. Remind yourself because you want to avoid getting everything spread out and then having to quit and put, put, having to push it all back into the box. Um, you want to work, of course, in a range that you can, um, of the time that's allotted. You want to benefit from having a little bit organized, you know, every day. And then you want to avoid becoming overwhelmed and frustrated. So that's the other thing. When we keep piles of work onto ourselves and it looks like there's so much more to be done, it's harder to stay motivated. But when you look at a task and you think, yeah, I can get that done in an hour or two hours, then it's easy to plow through it. And then you can set yourself up for the next task as well. Oops, a little mouse issues today. Okay, so buttons, breads, and eyelets. The best way to store these items is in little Ziploc-type bags. They're inexpensive, they're reusable, they're lightweight. So in this example, you can see that I have the, these little cute little jars of buttons. They were a gift. They matched the scrapbook room at the office perfectly. My girlfriend gave them to me. She's like, oh, they're so cute. They'll match your room. And then I was like, yeah, but that's something that those are hard to store. And I have to remember where I put them. So um, I just separated them out. Like you can see the purple has two different shades of purple, like a light and dark. So the dark purple in a Ziploc bag and the light purple in a Ziploc bag. The oranges, I have the bigger buttons in one and the smaller buttons in the other. Just a few different ideas of how you can um, sort those out especially if you have a lot of them. And the, the lids, though, of the little jars, I cut the ribbon off, and I put those right in my rainbow section, too, because I thought they were adorable, those big, um, those big buttons. So just that makes it so much easier. Once it's in a Ziploc bag, you can just drop it into a pocket, or you can put it into you know, your big Ziploc bag with other embellishments or um, into your file folder or whatever, whereas one of these little cute jars, adorable as they are, you can't really put them into something without them taking up a bunch of space. So ribbon and fiber is a big challenge for a lot of people. I don't want you to reinvent the wheel, the ribbon wheel. Uh, I want you to take yards and yards of ribbon off something that's already existing. So if you're somebody who buys ribbon by the big school, um, the important thing is to get that ribbon grouped into your, it's actually only three sections because there's no alphanumeric, um, but get it grouped into those three sections. So if you're using dowels or something for your ribbon, that you have your rainbow, you have your theme, and then you have your calendar year. So the idea is, this is very similar to what we talked about with paper for paper junkies, right? Um, if you, you want to know exactly where to look to find that ribbon. So you're going to go to the calendar section to find your Christmas ribbon. Same thing, same way you would go to your calendar section to find your Christmas paper in the paper storage box. So you want to just keep those things tied together so they're easy to find. If you have to look through a wall of ribbon for that Christmas ribbon, there's a good chance you're going to overlook it, and then you'll be up at Michael's finding a new roll of Christmas ribbon. If you're not a ribbon junkie or you buy ribbon by the yard, then um, using the ribbon and fiber, um, wraparound ribbon and fiber storage cards is a great way to go. Um, they're plastic coated, so if you don't have full length to hook into the notch, you can use um, repositionable glue dots, and they peel right off the plastic coating super easy when you're done with the ribbon. Um, but it does condense a lot of ribbon or fiber down into a small area that you can then put right into your 
um, rainbow section of your four section system. Okay, so stickers and die cuts. Don't again, don't let yourself get overwhelmed by taking on this huge challenge with them. So start with a small stack, a container, half a container, whatever is manageable, sort them and put them into wherever they belong in your four section system. Now, one thing that happens, ladies, is that you'll come across something. Let's say you come across a ballet sticker, right? You don't have any other ballet stuff. So you think to yourself, I don't have enough stuff to start my ballet section. So I'm just going to take this ballet sticker and I'm going to set it aside um, over on the other side of my workspace. And um, I'm getting this weird feedback in my headset. So I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm talking kind of weird. Um, so if anybody else, hopefully everybody, if you can just throw your hands up again so I'm sure that I'm still coming through to you guys, that would be great. Or put your hands up. Perfect. So I know that you guys are perfect. All right, guys. Um, so I'm going to have to close my little navigation screen there. Um, so you, what you don't want to do is set that aside and say, oh, I'll start a ballet section later. Start a ballet section with one thing, and then the next time you come across something that's for ballet, you'll be ready to add it to that. So don't let yourself get sucked into that thinking that I don't have enough um, to start that section. One thing is enough to start that section. So um, don't, don't, don't chicken out, ladies. Go ahead and start your section. All right, so this week's challenge is to sort and store one container a day for four out of the next seven days. So your containers could be little tiny jewelry size boxes of whatever, or they could be, you know, shoe box size sticker boxes full of stickers or die cuts or whatever it is. Whatever you deem as a container, you want to sort one container a day for four out of the next seven days. You want to sort four to six um, inches of paper on top of that, and then you want to post on Facebook or email customer service at thescraprack.com with your um, progress update so we can get you into the drawing every week for that also. So um, I know many of you have heard this Chinese proverb, the longest journey begins with a single step. Well, you guys are beyond the single step. Um, your single step was signing up for the challenge, and now we're into number three, so you're well on your way. Once you begin the sorting process for all of these items, you're ready to stay the course. You have a map, a plan, and a destination. This means that anything you buy from this point forward gets put away immediately into your four-section system, even if it is the first item in that section. Don't allow new products to pile up. This new system will encourage you to think before you buy, so you'll know exactly where the items belong before you get to the cash register. This little bit of discipline will go a long way in helping you to stay organized. One of the other nice things that happens because of the because you're you're changing your thinking in this process, um, or many of you are, but um, is that when you do shop and you pick something up and you look at it and you think this is perfect, I love this, and then your brain starts to ask you these questions: Okay, what are you going to use it for? Where are you going to store it? Or how are you going to store it? And then the other thing that's going to happen, because your brain is starting to trigger, you know, I'm snapping my fingers, sorry about that. Your brain is starting to trigger your memory. You're going to find from time to time that your brain says, hey, you already have that. So you can put it back. You just need to find it. So there's a lot of times that we see stuff in a store that we think is really cute. And the reason we think it's really cute is because we thought it was really cute three months ago when we bought it for the first time. And so your brain works in this um the system of connections. And so as you start to make connections to things, it'll take you back further and further into memory and let you know what you've got or let you know that you've got something that's very similar to what you're holding in your hand. Maybe it's something uh, similar enough that you don't need that thing or maybe it's something that's going to work really well with that thing. But you'll find this sort of amazing connection about how your brain works. And the more you encourage your brain to work that way, the better it works that way. It's, it's an amazing thing about your brain that practice with your brain um, not only work up Alzheimer's, but um, makes your brain stronger. So um, don't be afraid to practice memory and asking yourself, do I have this? This looks familiar. Why does it look familiar? And then your brain starts making those connections and looking through all the random information that's in there to find what you need. So don't be afraid to work out your brain. Okay, so here are um, some I, some of what the Scrap Rack brand pages are. 
And now the pages at the top in the yellow, with the yellow background, those can be modified using a hot tool. So um, I, I know some of you know what the hot tool is. Some of you own the hot tool. Some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. So I'll show you. Let me get, let me, um, let me see here. Let me go back to my little page here. So when you go to the Scrap Rack website, now, now let's see if I'll be able to find it. This is just thescraprack.com. If you click on the logo in the middle, it'll take you in. And then um, I think it's under Cool Tools. Let's find out. If you click on Cool Tools, there it is, the Hot Marks Hot Craft tool. So this little tool will allow you to um, modify the way your Scrap Rack pages are. And so there's a video right here. If you just scroll down um, below the tool, there's a video that you can um, watch. And this is actually a gal named Patty Behan who put it on her blog. And then she allowed me to steal it off her blog and post it on her website. So if you're unfamiliar with the Hot Marks tool, um, that's what it is. And there's a video there so you can watch how to use it. But um, those, these pages, the yellow pages, can be, um, can be modified with that. Then um, the pages below are the specialty pages. So there's the embellishment storage page, the wraparound ribbon fiber storage, and then the side loader single. So I guess it's kind of can be perceived sort of as mean for me to be showing these to you because I think the embellishment page and the wraparound ribbon and fiber card are out of stock, I believe, um, until next month. But they'll be they'll be coming, I promise, ladies. And then the new pages arrive next month. So here's kind of, for those of you I know who saw the sneak peek video, um, here are the new pages. So in the upper left is the Fantastic Five, and you can see that it will hold four five-by-seven photos, and it has a little tiny pocket in the middle. Um, and then the straight eight is designed for those of you who love, love, love lots and lots of embellishments. So you can put long uh, Ziploc bags full of embellishments in there. So these are three inches wide by six inches deep. And then the triple play, the last one on the top, is three long narrow pockets. So a nice compromise between the double X and the four in a row. And then on the bottom, we have both sides of the page planner page. So the um, back side is a 12 by 12 pocket to hold your full sheets of paper. And the front side is three small pockets. It's kind of hard to see in this picture, but there's a 6 by 12 pocket along the bottom, and then uh, a 6 by 7 pocket on the left side, and a 4 by 6 pocket on the right side. So you can put pictures, memorabilia, journaling notes, um, paper, all of those things together. So if you're somebody who likes to plan pages, um, you can put all those things together. And that is made out of the same fabric, a little bit heavier fabric than the basic storage page, the same fabric as the side loader single um, pages are, and those will all be in, in June. Now, for those of you who are going to be in Arlington this weekend, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be being mean to the rest of you who don't get to come to Arlington, we had um, a small amount of all of these new products air freighted in to the Arlington show. So we will have um, only one case of each. It's kind of crazily expensive to bring them in by air, um, but we wanted to have them at the show. So, um, so for those of you who are in Arlington, you can come and check those out. And I don't mean to sound like a crazy, pushy salesperson, but Arlington is a three-day show. It's one of the biggest shows in the country. Um, and I would say, please don't hesitate if you want to see the new product or get um, your hands on the new products, because I'm guessing with a small quantity, we only have one case of each there, but they'll be gone by Saturday morning. So. Um, and then the rest of the stuff is on its way, ladies. So those of you who aren't in Arlington, it'll just be another couple weeks, and we'll have everything at the warehouse, and you will know all about it because we will send you an email, and I will talk about it here as well. Whoops, went too far. So, all right, so I'm going to open up the question pane now. So anybody that has questions, if you haven't typed them in, you can type them in now. Um, let me get my thing all. I have to make my screen a little bit bigger here for this. Okay, so let's go back to where we left off at 901, 902. Um, lots of nice posts from earlier this morning. Thank you so much to all of you. Um, Kay Bradfield says, good morning to my Atlanta peer from Stone Mountain, Georgia. I love Stone Mountain. 
Um, Candy Ford says, oh, my God, I won. I'm so excited. Uh, you're so welcome. I'm so glad you won. It's nice that you're excited. What a nice little post. I'm sorry you guys can't see these um, posts that I'm reading here. Karen says, this is a product question. Will the pink travel pack be back in stock? Yes, it will. Uh, it will it will be in in mid June. We did not uh, air freight any of those in to Arlington. It's about seven hundred dollars to overnight stuff from China in that size package. So we won't have any of those, but they will be here in mid June. Uh, Brenna says I've completed the challenge two with twelve by twelve paper, and I'm working on my scraps. Good job, Brenna. Brenna also says using paper boxes instead of paper trays is better, and I have more space. I have to agree, the paper trays take up a lot of space and there's a lot of wasted space. When you're using paper storage boxes, not if you're using ours or somebody else's, you can condense things down because you don't have to take, lift everything off to pull things out or to see things. So they really do make it a lot smaller. Candy says, I have so many embellishments. I had to use large boxes to sort instead of sheets of paper. I essentially filled a large box for each color. Yes, I'm a god a lot. Yes, you are, Candy. Okay, Kathy says, hi, I have what I call don't know what to do with this box. Uh, things like stick pins with alphabet tips, lots of robots and stickers. They're multicolor, seamless items, and don't I don't know what to do with them. Okay, so first of all, Kathy, I just want you to reevaluate those things on a couple of levels. First of all, um, if, you, <laughs> if you don't know what to do with them, um, did you buy them for a particular reason? Like maybe you bought... Um, you know, floral rub-ons thinking of spring or floral rub-ons for Mother's Day or floral rub-ons for your daughter's birthday or whatever it is. So if there's a particular reason you bought them, you want to keep things together that you would use together. Stick pins with alphabets on the top. Those are obviously going to go in your alphabet section, so that's an easy one. Things with multicolors, it's okay to put a rainbow section at the back of your rainbow. So things that you just cannot, there's no dominant color, there's no reason that you bought it. So a lot of times you'll buy something with multiple colors in it, something with blues and greens or whatever, thinking um, I'm going to use this with my beach pages or I'm going to, I like this because of the blue in it. Why do you like it? What's your favorite thing about it? So if it doesn't specifically scream a color, does it specifically scream a theme or um, you know, you, if you buy something that has beautiful purples in it, but it also has pinks and greens and blues, but you bought it for the purple, then it should go on for, under purple. And remember this, ladies. If we all spent the rest of our lives doing nothing but scrapping, the vast majority of us would not run out of products, right? So if you put a few things in the wrong place, it's not really going to matter because as you're flipping through them later, if that pops out at you and says, boy, I would use this if it was in beach instead of in travel or whatever, then you can just move it over. But the truth is, don't get caught up in making the decision process hard. If you don't love it, put it in your purge box. If you don't know how to use it and probably won't ever expend the time or energy to find out how to use it, put it in your purge box. If you bought it and it's pink polka dots and you bought it for ballet, then it's going to go in ballet. If it's screens out to you spring, it's going to go in spring. Don't worry that somebody else might not feel the same way. It's your stuff. So what does it say to you, and where would you most likely use it? And that's where you're going to put it. It's also, you know, when you're talking about rub-ons that are flourishes and just little swirly lines and stuff, you can just put them right into the color of the line that they are, or they might be flourishes and swirly lines, and they, they say to you, um, ancestry. These are perfect for ancestry pages. So then they're going to go in your ancestry section. So you make a quick decision and then don't worry about it because you have plenty of stuff and you're going to be able to come across it. Here's the other thing. It's all going to be visible. Once you get it organized, you're going to be able to see it on a regular basis. So you'll know that you have it. So try not to worry too much. Uh, Mary says, where do you suggest we get the stick on tap? Um, you can get the stick on tabs at Office Depot. We sell them on the website. We sell the Office Depot brand on the website. Avery makes them also. Um, we have them on the website because it's convenient and easy for people, especially if you don't have an Office Depot near you, but um, they are on the website. Sherry asks, does putting the bulky items such as eyelets and buttons into the scrap rack make indentation in the paper, cardstock, or other delicate items? It does not. Um, you have to remember that 
everything is protected by layers of plastic, and especially when you're talking about eyelets or brads or whatever. So those are inside a Ziploc bag, inside a plastic sheet. But more importantly with the scrap rack, you're not pushing straight down on top of your products. Your products are sitting at an angle. So there isn't a lot of weight pushing down to do damage or make any kind of indentation in those products. So for those of you, I know it's kind of, I mean, if you come and see us at a show, you can look at our, the, the stuff that we have at the show, the demo units at the show. And with the demo units at the show, we take, we take that entire demo unit, we take the binders off, we put all of the pages for our demo units into one travel pack and squish it down really tight. And so if there was going to be damage to anything, you would see it in that um, sample kit. But, you know, there's no damage to the edges and corners because the dividers are in there and they're bigger than the pages. And even in that situation where we are packing pages down, we don't see any problems with indentations or those kind of things. Remember, the dividers are in there, too, so there's another layer of protection against that. So it really doesn't help and happen. Elda says, how do you keep the little bags products from sliding out of the bottom of the large bag in the scrap rack. Do you plan ahead when a when do you plan ahead where in a large bag smaller bags will go? I'm not sure that I'm following you. How do you keep the bag products from all sliding to the bottom of the large bag in the scrap rack? So I'm wondering, uh, Elda, if you're talking about the super size single, um, and then they would just drop to the bottom. But if you use the smaller pockets for the little bags, then you're going to be in great shape. So I'm not sure that that, um, that that I'm not sure I'm, I'm understanding your question. Please feel free to repost it if not. Uh, Cheryl McDonald says, sorry I was late. Hope I didn't miss much. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl, Sharon. I can't read. Um, Sharon worked with us in um, New Hampshire, I think. Now all the shows are starting to run together in my brain. Kristen says, how do you handle embossing powder and glitter? I put it in a Ziploc bag. So if you think about it, especially things like glitter, you might buy a large thing of glitter that is either a tube or a, you know, jar that, you know, could it be an inch and a half or two inches tall? It could be four inches tall, you know, and an inch and a half around. You don't need all that glitter ever, right? Not when you're working on a scrapbooking supply. If you want to cover your TV in glitter on Christmas, that might take a whole jar. But really all you need to make to make cards or, or scrapbooking pages or whatever is what you can put in a small little two-by-two if you aren't even comfortable with that, a little three by five Ziploc bag, and um, put it right into the pocket page. And then when you run out of glitter in that little bag, you can go back to your back stock area and refill the bag and put it in there. Same with embossing powder. And that way you have it with you when you want to use it. If you're at a crop or something, you take your red section, then you're going to have your red glitter in there. You're not going to have to also bring your jar of red glitter, and you're going to get the most out of it. So I had a pause for a drink there. Put it in the Ziploc bag and put it right in the color section where it belongs. Um, Kristen says, as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I have a lot of Stampin' Up! stuff, but also have tons of other stuff that I personally use. Do you suge suggest that I have two systems to keep these things separate? Um, it depends what you do with your Stampin' Up! stuff. So if you want to be able to take your Stampin' Up! stuff separate from your other stuff when you're going to an event, then I would definitely recommend having spinders that were designated for Stampin' Up! only and spinders that were designated for other stuff. And so, but you can put them side by side in your scrap rack. So if you have your, you know, theme, you know, A through F on a spinder, and that's other products, and then themes A through F for Stampin' Up!, then they're right next to each other so you can see them and get to them easily. If you don't take your Stampin' Up! stuff, then you can put it all together. But I know as a demonstrator that you want to go and show um, your products and how they work and all of those kind of things, and you want to make it easy. So if you're going to take your stuff with you, then definitely keep them on separate binders for that. It'll make it a lot easier to do that. Lori Ann says, I'm having a hard time with letters. Some are boxed, some are chipboard. No room in my scrap rack, pages for all my letters. Any suggestions? Yes. Um, <clears throat> You don't want to, again, let's go back to talk about how we talked about the ribbon. You want to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to pull all those chipboard letters or whatever out of letter boxes. But what you do want to do is keep all of your other letters that aren't going to fit in your scrap rack. Or and maybe some people are alphabet obsessed, I know, and have lots and lots and lots of alphabets. 
Um, I'll, try, I'll post my little chipboard sorter. Um, let me write myself a note here. I think I don't think I put it up for you guys yet. Gonna, but I have a little chipboard sorter where I put exactly those things. Um, and so they're all organized. All the alphabet letters and stuff are together for those bulky things, but they're all in one place. So when I need something, I'm only going to one place, and that's the key. So if you just sort of try to apply those ideas, like um, when we talked about um, ribbon, that you might have a wall of ribbon, but you want to have it in those three sections. You know, the themes, the calendar year, and the rainbow. You might have more paper than you want to put in your scrap rack. Your paper junkie, you've got ten boxes of paper. But you want those 10 boxes of paper to follow along that same theme, holidays, rainbow, that same mental path. So when you do need to pull things together, you can grab that Christmas box or that, you know, box of all your, or go to that one box and find all your chipboard alphabet letters or whatever it is. So try to think in groups so that you can minimize the steps that you need to get to stuff and that you can maximize the knowledge that you have of where those are. So. Um, and that's true on it for a number of things. So let's see. Krista says, when I first started scrapping, I bought these, these sheets of punch-out letters, not chipboard, just heavy paper, just sheets in one color. But I have two to three of these 8 by 11 sheets. Do you recommend putting them in alphanumeric as sheets or in the rainbow? I'm assuming you wouldn't recommend punching the letters out and organizing them by letter. No. Right. So Krista. Um, just put them in eight and a half by eleven page protectors, and put them in your alphabet section, and put them all together. Because really, what we're after is the size of the letters in general. You don't want to separate them out by rainbow. I think I might have talked a little bit about this last week, but if you put your red letters in red, and your blue letters in blue, and your white letters in white, then when you're trying to write Fourth of July and you don't have enough in red or blue then you've got to look in all three different color categories to see if by chance you have the same approximate size of letter or same exact size and font of letter to spell out that whole word. But if you put your alphabets all together in alphanumeric and you group them together by size as close as possible, then you'll see that you have stickers like you, exactly the same thing, where you have two or three different um, colors of the same thing where you might want to use them all together to spell something out and then they're all together. You don't have to rely on your memory or dig through each color section. So keep them all together, keep them by size, and keep them in the alphanumeric section. Section one, as it were. Brenna says, can I have a specialty paper section in each of my colors for glitter, pearl, and boss mulberry paper? You can. Um, I mean, I, I think absolutely you should have, you know, I guess your question is, Yes, all your colored paper, regardless of what type of paper it is, should be in the rainbow section where it belongs. But yeah, if you wanted to tab something off for specialty papers, glitters or vellums or mulberry or whatever, pearl, emboss, you can certainly put those right into the rainbow section. What you don't want to do is start a section separate from everything else um, for specialty papers. You want to keep them in with the right color group, and it sounds like that's what you're doing. Krista asks, Tiffany, you don't have to read this. Oh. Um, oh, <laughs> Chris is sitting there to read this out loud. I'm hoping to hear from HSN soon. A group of us from Facebook have been sending emails to try and get them the scrap right there. Good luck. Thank you so much, Krista. I have tried to get on HSN and QVC. I think the scrap right is the perfect product for those shows because we could actually teach people about organization while we show the product on the shows. I think it's a, I think it's a perfect match. I think that the scrap rack. It's um, so different. I mean, it's, it's very simple. It's not complicated, but it's different than how people think about organization. So I think it's really hard for people to understand it. So thank you for campaigning on my behalf. Um, hopefully, we will see it up on HSN, and you guys will get a good uh, package from HSN, and we'll be able to touch more of the scrapbooking audience. So thank you for that. I appreciate that you're crusading for me. Um, Joanna says, in a past webinar, you mentioned that you used a perfect six page to organize three albums, one for each child and you. The new triple play page will be a perfect complement to the perfect six when you're planning, when you're page planning. So um, that's a great point, Joanna. That um, I, I don't know if you you all have heard me talk about multiple album planning, but that's what Joanna is referring to, and it would be easy to line up. Um, embellishments with layouts for between the perfect six and the triple play. 
And I guess I probably shouldn't start talking about that because that's coming up in the photo or the holding album webinar. So there's also some stuff on the website about it if you want to. Um, I'll get on a tangent here. Okay, Christina says, I can't thank you enough for all the info and help. I have been taken, I have even taken it to the rest of my home. The purchase has been wonderful. Yay, you have given me a way to stay organized that I can wrap my brain around it all. I will send you pictures of my stacks of empty containers soon. This is now uh, the Truth Organization Zone. Thank you so much, Christina. I'm so glad it's working for you. And it is so funny, you know, many of these concepts and principles are really easily applied across the board to other things in your life. And I'll tell you one really simple thing is to put a purge box in your front hall closet or somewhere else that's really accessible to you. And then when you come across a piece of clothing that your children have outgrown or some sort of kitchen apparatus or toy or something that you don't use anymore and you don't need, it's easy to throw it into that Goodwill box. The Goodwill box is readily available. For me, the Goodwill um, drop station is about three blocks from our office. So it makes it really simple for me. I have that box in my front hall closet. I just throw, you know, especially kids. I have boys, you know, teenage boys. They grow every day. I'm constantly pulling things out of the laundry that are too small for them and they're boys. So they would keep wearing it. Um, until someone literally ripped it off their body, and so that is too tall for you. So as I'm doing laundry, I'm constantly coming across these things. Well, because my um, box is right there, it's easy for me to throw it in that box, and whenever the box is full, I throw it in the back of my car, go to work, take everything in. You actually have a drive-up station, which is even easier. But if you make it easy on yourself, then it is easy to do. One of the reasons that we kind of get paralyzed with purging things out of our homes is because we're not sure where to put it until we're ready to take it somewhere. We don't want to just create another pile in the garage that ends up being a pile that nothing happens for. So keep making it simple on yourself. So way to go, Christina. I'm so happy to hear that. Naomi says, I've managed to get most of my supplies together using the same sorting methodology as my paper and have experienced the benefits of having things together that I would use together. However, I have a concern about my bottles of glitter glue and spray mist. They are Small, but not small enough to fit in heavy-duty embellishment space. Should they also go in the sections? I'm using a scrap. I'm using a scrap rack, but I'm concerned that the bottles are too bulky and will weigh down the pages and cause tearing and the mess is all over my stuff. Well, the good news is, Naomi, they probably wouldn't tear your pages. Um, but the the bad news is, they probably won't fit very well either in there. So that we're going to talk about glitter glues and stickles and those kind of things when we talk about the color section and making catalogs of those things and how to organize them so that you can put their, your hands on them easily. So that's coming up. Wait, is that next week? I don't remember the order here. Next week might be photos, actually. But it's coming up. Um, if you check the calendar, the schedule, which actually I can go right back here and we're, we'll see. Um, let me look here. When, when is the color one coming up? Oh, so it's actually not until June 26th. So, um, but we will talk quite a bit about that. Um, well, that's what that whole thing will, will be about um, when we do the one on the 26th. So don't fear, we'll get to it. And we'll give you some good ways to do that as well. Lori Ann says, will you have the new pages in Chantilly? It's possible. We're hoping that we do. So keep your fingers crossed that tracking for Chantilly, we're going to be right on the line there for actually um, for actually getting things there. Sharon says, who won this week's gift certificate? And the winner this week was um, Candy Ford. Marcia Montgomery says, what about multicolored ribbon? Same thing, Marcia. Just put it in if you have a multi-section. Put it either put it with a color that you love the most or that you're most likely to use it with or you can put it in the very back of your rainbow section with a multi, other stuff that's sort of multicolored. Um, Elda says, how can I access the advice on paper organization you, um, you spoke about? I missed that. Thank you. You have so many great ideas. It's really easy, Elda. Go to our website. So I'm going to click back there right now so you can see. So when you go to thescraprack.com, see if I can get back to that home page. When you go to the scraprack.com, you're going to get to this big pink page. You're going to click on the Scrap Rack logo in the middle of the page. And then over here on the left side, you can see the square lighting up in bright pink, Overwhelmed to Organize Summer Challenge. You're just going to click on that, and that's going to take you to the page where the past videos are posted. 
So you can see I'm just scrolling down the page, and there's the piles of paper from May 22nd. So if you want to um, view those, you can go back and watch them that way. Donna says, are you coming to Charlotte in August to CK? I already have my scrap rack organized, but need to tweak it. We will not be in Charlotte this year, which I'm very disappointed about because I love Charlotte. So since we're not there this year, we will probably be there next year. We will be in, where else are we going to be on that side of the world? Um, we're going to be in Chantilly, Virginia, and we're going to be in Lancaster, PA. And I think that's it for all the way over uh, for the year. But if you want to know where we're going to be, now that I have the website open behind me, you can go on right here where it says Scrap Rack Roadshow, meet us. You can click on that, and then it gives all the shows and the links to the shows that we are going, where we're going to be. Um, Marcia says, what about paper that is all alphanumeric? Um, it depends. <laughs> it depends. There's a couple of, when you look at the paper, did you buy it for the alphabets? Like you're going to use those, you're going to cut them up and use them to spell words or whatever. Then I would put it in alphanumeric. But if you bought it because it looks like great ancestry paper or back to school paper or something more specific that way, then that's where I would put it. So you, in most cases, paper that has alphabets on it, um, it is goes with something else. Traditionally, it's back to school paper or it is something that's like old-fashioned fonts that are like ancestry based or whatever. So whatever you're going to use that paper for, that's the theme I would put it in. If you don't have any plan for it and it doesn't scream any theme to you, then go ahead and throw it in your alphanumeric section. The nice thing about the alphanumeric section, whatever you put in there, you're going to see it all the time because we use letters all the time. So trying to pause for a drink there. So it'll pop up for you, up for you and you'll see it. Oh, if uh, Teresa Krymowski, who won last week, this is a note from Joanna, sorry. Um, we don't have a way to contact you, Teresa. So if you, um, we've tried to find you in Facebook, and we don't have you in our database either. So if you, um, if you are out there, please email Joanna. She is customer service at thescrapwreck.com. Uh, Kay says, I missed the first class, had to work. Those darn jobs. How can I listen to lesson two, uh, lesson two, lesson one, and one I missed? And so I think if you just go, I think you probably saw this organized only um, challenge over here, and then just scroll down, and you'll find it. Okay. Nadine says, love this seminar. I'm wondering if Creative Memories plastic storage pages, will they fit in the scrap rack? Thanks, Nadine. Anything that's a standard three-hole punch, which I believe those products are, will fit in the scrap rack. So if it's something you're already using from Crop and Style or Copper Hopper or Creative Memories or the Office Supply Store, if it's got a standard three-hole punch, it's going to work. So just throw it all in there. Karen says, I have a collection of club scrap kits and pizza boxes. What to do? Keep together. How to remember what I have in the scrap rack? So um, Karen, in an interest of I could, um, I'm going to direct you back to the um, paper, um, piles of paper. Um, thing that we did on May 22nd because I talked specifically in that um, webinar about how to handle those boxes and you don't want to take them all apart if they're full of stuff but you do want to represent them in your scrap rack so there it's about halfway through um, that piles of paper uh, video you can um, turn it on and kind of scroll through you'll see there's a big picture when you get to the picture of the boxes and they're just numbered and so and the, all the details are there so anybody else too that's um, missed last week about paper. I do talk a lot about kits and stacks and those kind of things that we're kind of get perplexed about what to do with them in that um, I don't mean to be rude. I just don't want to, you know, we're supposed to be done in an hour, which gives me four more minutes. We usually go over. I don't know why I'm so concerned. It's very rare that I can stick to my hour. Um, Christina says, I have heard so much stuff and made a few friends very happy with all this stuff as well. So, yeah, there are other people who will joyfully use your supplies. So I know purging is difficult for people, but try to think of what's happening at the other end, and it really makes it a lot easier. Fran says, this is my first webinar. Are we able to view the first two? And so, yes. Um, Karen says, meaning what is in the kit? 
So she was talking about um, she has, is talking about the um, kits. That the question already answered. So that is all on the how's of paper video. Um, Dana says I have completed the paper challenge. I'm totally enjoying my paper now and not feeling overwhelmed. Yay! What do you do with paper packs such as those from Close to My Heart? And again, if I can just refer you back to the piles of paper video, you don't, this like ribbon and the other things we've talked about, you don't want to pull everything apart and sort of reinvent it. What you want to do with all these kinds of things is figure out a way to represent them in your four section system. And depending on whether or not you're using paper storage boxes and the scrap rack or binders or whatever you're using, those things are going to vary a little bit. But that close to my heart pack, if it's a Christmas pack, Put it with your Christmas stuff. Um, if it's a uh, you know red pack or reds and pinks, put it in the rainbow next to red. Just get it close so that when you go to look for something, it pops up for you and you can use it. And again, there's more sort of in-depth steps on how to do that in the piles of paper video. Um, at least says you asked us to raise our hands. I know we can't see you, but if we have webcams, can you see us? If so, I'll stop doing grooming things. <laughs> I can't see you, um, and nor, nor can you see me. I'm working with a new product called Vocal that hopefully I will be able to see you if you have a webcam and if you have it turned on. And when you raise your hand and I call on you, then your little picture will pop up so everybody will see you. And you'll also be able to see me. So we're working out some, there's some bugs with that system, but hopefully we're going to be able to switch over. I think it'll be more fun um, if you can see me, at least during the Q&A period. So. Um, let's see. Lorraine says, what do I do with overstock? I have a lot of one item, too many for the scrap rack. That's a great question, Lorraine. I'm sorry I haven't already addressed that. But what you want to do, overstock tends to be um, mostly rainbow stuff, right? You get a great deal on, you know, 2,000 red brads. You get, you know, 500 sheets of red cardstock, whatever it is. You have a, you know, six-inch tall by two-inch round jar of glitter in red. So what you want to do if you want to keep all the things together, again, by theme, so let's talk about red. So you, if you have a back stock box that has your extra red paper, your red eyelets, and your red brads, and your red glitter, put all those things together in one place. And then when you're working with red and you use up the last of your red glitter, go and get your back stock box. I think there's even a video on the website about this. Um, I'm going to, I'll look, and if it is, if, if it's on there, I know I've done one in the past. Um, I'm writing myself a note here, so bear with me. Um, I'll post a link to it on the follow-up email from today. But um, but then when you refill the red glitter, you can also refill eyelets and buttons and brads and anything else that you have that's red at one time. So even though you might not be out of red brads, if there's three or four left, you can fill it out. So you're really, by putting the back stock stuff together as you're sorting, you're really making it easy to refill your scrap rack also. So you know that you don't need you know, any more than a two by two or three by five bag of glitter, um, right, for any project. But you can just keep refilling it and refilling the other things at the same time. So the back stock works really good. And I do, there is a video out on it, and I'll see if I can track it down and put the link in the follow-up email. Um, Jessica says, off the subject, how do you sort Two-sided paper. One side might be plain, the other side um, decor. And, you know, it just depends on the side you like best is my sort of feeling on it. What are you most likely to use? Um, and then I just choose the side that I'm most likely to work with, and that's where it goes. And I'll tell you something that's really funny that you mentioned that. Um, I just purged out this piece of paper that was bright red on one side and bright green on the other side. And I'm sure at some point it went with... Um, a kit that had those same red and greens for Christmas or something or, you know, other papers or whatever, and I've since used the other thing. But there's just this one paper left, and it's in my red section. Every time I turn the red page, I see the back side of it is green. And for some reason, it just drives me crazy. So I finally purchased it. I said, forget it. I, you know, it's basic red and green paper. I haven't gotten rid of it in the past because um, it's a basic thing. I thought, oh, I'll use that. But um, it just started bugging me, so. I got rid of it. But I had put it in red because that was where I was most likely going to use it. You know, it didn't fit any theme anymore other than it always reminded me of Christmas because it was red and green. So it made it into the perch box. But I would say go with the part that you love um, or that you're most likely to use. Sharon says, I'm loving this system. I thought my room was so organized that I was not scrapping because everything was tucked away and out of sight. 
Now I see what I have, and I am having an easier time purging stuff now that I see all of what I have for a certain category. I'm keeping the best and tossing the older, uglier stuff. Thanks, Tiffany. You're so welcome. That's one of the other things. It does get easier um, to streamline what you've got and get rid of things because you can see all the great stuff that you have, so it makes you less um, the need to keep stuff that you don't love. Um, it makes it a lot easier. So congratulations, Sharon. I'm so glad to hear that. Brenna says, can you have a gold, silver, pewter, colors in the rainbow? Absolutely. Um, I actually have a tab that says metallic, and then behind that, I've used the stick-on tabs to do um, red, gold, bronze, copper. So perfect. That's a perfect way to do it. Judy says, do we really want to make the pages precisely fit to the embellishment? Seems like that would be counterproductive to using the supplies and putting things away immediately. It is kind of kind of like stamps and not rearranging them each time you add something. Plus, I want to scrap and not spend all my time organizing. My scrap rack isn't a scrapbook, but it is beautiful. Uh, won't pockets close to the size work or put two things in a pocket? Yes. So, <laughs> and I think Judy's referring to the hot tool um, idea on there. Yes, absolutely. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't modified any of my pages. But some people, um, like things to be a perfect snug little fit or are trying to use um, less pages for one whole category. So let's say you had a couple of borders for um, St. Patrick's Day and then you had a couple of different um, eyelets or whatever, you know, small things and some stickers and you wanted to put it all on one page. And so then you could divide up easily um, a double extra long page to make it all work on one page. So. Um, I totally understand your point, um, Judy, and um, I would have to agree that it's, if, you, if you're if you not meticulous about things maybe sliding around a little bit in a pocket page, there's really no reason for it. It's more targeted towards people who um, are either trying to really condense things down onto specific pages and make them really functional or who are just kind of meticulous about that kind of thing. Now, the other thing is, especially with the new pages that we've just added, there probably is the right size pocket for anything that you're going to want to store. So, but it is possible to, um, to adapt those things. It's also possible to adapt other pages that aren't, exa that aren't scrap right pages as well. So, Karen says, Finally, I feel like I can breathe. I felt like I was lagging behind everyone, but now I'm moving forward slowly but surely. Things will start to come in time. And you're so right, Karen. Everybody works at a different pace. And I don't know if it makes you feel any better, but we have some people who listened through two whole series of webinar challenges who didn't have time to actually do the work, but have the use of the time to get the information, and then jumped in and started doing things. So. Um, you should feel great, um, everybody out there listening, even if you're not able to totally complete the challenges every week or, or maybe even get started on the challenges every week, you should feel great about the fact that you're doing something to move yourself forward and to improve your organization system. So um, just by virtue of the fact that you're here and you're participating, whether you're getting everything done every week or not, you're way ahead of most crafters. So you should pat yourself on the back and feel good that you're at least making some changes. Sherry says, do you attend any of the CKCs? We do. Um, the next two shows are Great American Scrapbook. The Atlanta show is Scrapbook Expo, but the Pennsylvania show is the CKC show. So they just vary. It just depends where, where in the country they are and we are. Linda says, is there a way to review just one particular organizing lesson without watching a whole webinar? For instance, I would like to see the paper tray versus box piece again. Um, kind of. If you go to the page here that's you know that on the website, it says um, May 22nd, challenge to pause the paper, download the PDF. So you can click on download the PDF and then find you know about how far in the pages that you want to hear. And then when you just start the video, I don't know if you all can see the video. If I push start on this video behind here, then you can just move the little cursor across until you get to the point that you want to see, you know, until you get the picture that you want to see. I'm sorry, I'm going to talk, I'll be talking over myself there. If I, um, so you just move that little dot on the bottom to wherever you want to be. But if you look at the PDF, if you download the PDF, it'll tell you that it's about halfway through or that, you know, 10 slides in or whatever, and it'll be easy for you to find it on the video. 
Elvis says, I am new to your site, so I don't know that the large plastic bags were divided into smaller sections so that one item doesn't slide over the other. Sorry, my question didn't make sense. That's okay, Elder. That's why we're here to learn. Um, but I'm glad that you clarified that because I was a little bit unsure also. But um, I'm glad that you found the site, and I'm glad that you're with us. And um, if you're thinking of a question, all of you, um, somebody else is probably thinking of that same question. So don't hesitate. Um, to ask it. Brenda says, suggestion, use double-sided tape to attach small baggies to a 12 by 12 chipboard. This prevents things from falling to the bottom of super-sized single. Also, you can use different size zip bags on the same chipboard. So you can absolutely do that, and, and it works really great. You can slip it right into your super-sized single that way. You can also, if you're not using a scrap rack, you can use that same method in like 12 by 12 file folders but for your little stuff as well, or even in your big Ziploc bag. Brennan says, where might I put chipboard tags, frames, et cetera? No color. Um, I would just put them in the shape section then. I think we've talked about that before. Like, so I have stars, tags, um, you know, kind of just kind of all grouped together. So if I'm looking for a chipboard shape, then I'm going to go to the whole section that has all the chipboard tags in it. And all, you know, if I'm looking for a tag, then I know exactly where to go. So just group them together by shape. And you might, if they're just plain chipboard, just plain brown chipboard, you can keep all those things um, together. Now, with things like tags, for other kinds of tags, like um, pre-cut cardstock tags, those are probably by color or by theme. But if you want to put all your chipboard stuff together just by shape, um, that's because it's not color specific. You could put it all together. I mean, for that matter, you could consider chipboard brown its own color, I guess. Um, Mary says, I have a number of papers, Japanese, et cetera, that are in rolls. How do these get stored? Um, again, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, but you do want to remember that you have them. So if you're currently storing those rolls of paper in drawers or something, I would just use a scrap of that paper and put it in your scrap rack or in the color section or the theme section or whatever it is um, so that you remember that you've got it and um, so that you'll go back and, you know, like if it's blue and you put it in the blue section then with a little note that says this is in the Japanese paper on the roll so you can go there and find it. Your goal is to trigger your memory that you have it so that you'll actually use it. So maybe putting a scrap in is a good way to do it. Now, if it's a full roll of paper and you don't want to cut a little scrap off that, you could just put a note in your um, color section that says, don't forget you have, you know, blue Japanese blue paper in the drawer. Just something to remind yourself of what you have and where it is. So don't put a note that says you have blue Japanese blue paper without telling yourself where that paper is. Because, you know, half the battle is being able to get to things in a reasonable manner. And what you don't want to do is say, don't forget your blue Japanese paper, and then think, do I put that in the cupboard, or what it used to be in the drawer, and then I moved it somewhere else, or whatever it is. And you just want to direct yourself back to where that product is. You don't spend a bunch of time looking for it. Brenda says, can I have a kids section where I put, where would kids go if I don't? Um, Brenda, you can have whatever section you want. And if you say, can I have a kids section, I'm assuming that means um, a place where you have, you know, embellishments and stuff about children um, versus a kid's section where, which is stuff that you are allowing your children to use. Actually, you could have either section. Um, but if you're, if it's your kid's section, then definitely. I, I just have boys, so I have a family section, and then behind the family tab, and so in the front part of the family section are things like houses and house keys and trying to think what else is in there, but things that are general family things. And then I have a tapped off section that's all about just boys, and it just has all the stuff for the boys in there. But I would definitely say, if, you know, you can have a kid's section, whether it's in family or just in kids, that's fine if you're just talking about generic kinds of stuff. So Lee says, my mom and sister want you to go to the UK on Create and Craft TV. I would love to go to the UK and be on create and craft TV. Um, so hopefully someday I will be over there on creating craft. That would be so much fun. I don't know how to get on creating craft. If they have any advice for me, I'm happy to hear it though. Christina says, the scrap rack rocks my world now. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear it. 
Uh, Marcia says, can we use regular 12 by 12 scrapbook page protectors to organize until the scrap rack pages arrive? Absolutely. Here's the thing. Anything that's got a standard three hole punch, not only can you use it in the process, but you can integrate it into your scrap rack later. So you're going to find that there are some things that work really great in your scrap rack and some things that don't work as well, but anything that's with a standard three hole punch is going to work. So feel free to use whatever you've got handy. Brenna says, so we can have a multi-section but not miscellaneous. Yes, there is no miscellaneous, um, ladies. Multi is a defined thing. These are pa papers, mostly, um, that have multiple colors and then undefined, that are rainbow, essentially, that could work on any level of thing. A miscellaneous category, when you start a miscellaneous category, it tends to be for things like, oh, I have one ballet sticker, but nothing else. I'll put that in there. Oh, I have, you know, three sheets of uh, paintball paper. I don't have a paintball section. I'll put those in there. Oh, I have two Hanukkah stickers that I wanted a crop. Um, I'll throw those in there. Whatever, whatever it is, it becomes a mishmash of things that actually belong elsewhere, and you're just too lazy to think about where they go. So multi is fine, but miscellaneous is not. That's my, one of my very few rules. Uh, Kay says, Duluth, Georgia is Atlanta. Yes. Duluth, um, if I said the Atlanta show, I was talking about the, the show that's actually in Duluth. Um, are you, Brenda says, are you ever going to be in Sacramento? We, there's a good chance we will do the Sacramento show next year. I can't commit to it. California has so many shows. I think there's like six in California. So it's hard for us to choose which shows to go to. And, um, but next year, I think we will probably do one Southern California show and one Northern California show, and I know that Sacramento isn't exactly Northern, it's I guess more Central or, um, I don't know, maybe you guys consider it Northern, I guess. So there's a good chance we will either do the Costa Mesa show, which is now the Anaheim show, I guess, and then the Bay, one of the Bay Area shows or Sacramento show next year. So we'll know more about that. We actually plan for next year's shows in um, late October, early November of this year. So that schedule should be coming out. CM Taylor says, does anyone have a resource for refill sheets that fit the Inca Do Clear Stamp Storage Binder? So if anyone, I don't, CM, I, if you're on Facebook, the Facebook page, that's a great place to post that. But if anyone in this group knows where to get those, if you let me know, I'll try to repost. Um, Mika says, are you coming to Charlotte? Not this year. Um, I, then Brenda says, I have a lot of gold buttons and embellishments. The pages are really heavy and way down pages, so they slip way down. And also a lot of Ziploc bags slip out. Suggestions. Um, my first suggestion is to take a look at your base unit and make sure the long hinge is at the top instead of at the bottom. Because generally if things are popping out of your pages, it's because it's just set up on its back, which means it's a little too much of an angle. That's the first thing. The second thing is the more stuff you have in your scrap rack, the more binders and the more pages and the more loaded it up it is, the more, the less likely it is that you have any kind of page tag at all. So you might just need to buy more stuff or actually add more stuff to your scrap rack and put your binders a little bit closer together. And the third thing is load your heavy stuff closest to the ring and your lighter stuff to the outside of the pocket. So if you have you know, big bags of buttons or whatever, put those in the pockets that are closest to the binder and put the lighter weight stuff on the outside and that should solve your problem. Um, Karen says, where can we get the Ziploc baggies to store the brass and so forth? Um, you can buy them in a number of locations. I think we, we used to have a store here called Paper Zone and they sold them. We have them on the, um, Um, we have them on the website also. Mary says, how do you organize your back stock items? Also by the four section system, Matthew, yes. So we kind of went through that already. Um, Kay Brassfield says, we'll call my friends to recommend loved. Um, so I think I missed part of her comment there. Sharon says, I am learning that everyone has their own goals for the scrap work. I was stumped when I saw a posting of a rainbow section that filled two full scrap rack units. Wow, I was thinking, this is not for me. I want to keep a sampling of everything so when I go to a crop, I can grab and actually scrap. I don't want to go through everything I own. I want to get pages done 
to this woman, congrats to you. It looks great. Thank you for helping me rethink my goals. Now I do not feel like I need to put everything in. I am loving how this is going. I still have tons to go through, but I am happy with my organizing the more I get done. Good job, Sharon. And that is true. You know, I, I, I've said it a few times already, and I'll probably continue through the challenge. This is really not an opportunity to know yourself and question yourself. And we talked a little bit about that when we talked about purging. What kind of traffic am I? What are my goals here? What do I really want to accomplish? And so like Sharon says, her goal is to get things done. So she wants to have her scrap rack dialed in for maximum production efficiency and being able to go to a crop and class easily. And then there are other people, and you've seen some of these scrap racks that are six and eight units long, who never leave home. They want everything in their scrap rack and um, so that they can see, you know, everything's in one simple place. So as you go through this whole process, you really, it really is an opportunity to sort of evaluate yourself. And to be honest, ladies, um, I think this is one of the places that our education system falls down because we aren't really taught to evaluate ourselves that way. I mean, certainly we do our own sometimes at work. We are asked to fill out our own performance evaluation first. And, um, you know, but the difference is <laughs> it's hard to be honest in that. You're going to share with somebody. This is a situation where you can be totally honest with yourself. Why am I doing this? What are my goals? How can I be more efficient? You know, and it's different for everybody. And you know, there are people like Sharon, I want to get things done. My goal is to do a lot of scrapbooking. And there are other people who just love to play with their supplies and they love the idea of collecting supplies. And you know, and it's almost a more of a toy kind of thing that they just enjoy. Part of the passion of the um, hobby is, you know, looking at the things and sort of playing with the things and so there's all these things from two ends of the spectrum and discovering where you are in the middle and how you scrap and what you want to scrap about is all part of the journey. So it's a great time to be a little bit introspective because it's just you. You don't have to answer to anybody else. Well, you're going to have to answer to me if you create a miscellaneous section. But other than that, you're in great shape. Um, Joanna posts a reminder. We have an unlimited supply of workbooks available because they're download. Books. So if you got, haven't gotten yours yet, please feel free to email Joanna at customer service at the .com with the words workbook, please, in the subject line, and she will send you the workbook. Bonnie Block says, I listened to all the seminars since your second series, and I have only recently made significant progress. Bonnie. That's what I'm saying. Some people like to listen. Some people have to get ready for a long time to get organized. But once you've got your brain on that different path of thinking, it becomes really easy, and you can start moving ahead. Monique says, I have a craft section for chipboard, et cetera, since I love to use it. And she spells craft, K-R-A-F-T, so she's got her chipboard grouped all together in that section. Lee says, I'll email you the website for Create and Craft so you can check it out. Good, I'm going to watch for that. Don't forget. Uh, Kathy says, are there any online stores in Canada that sell the scrap rack? The whole duties, taxes, and other customs red tape make ordering from U.S. a huge pain. Yes. It's just called um, the scraprack.ca, or it might be scraprack.ca, I guess. Let's look. So you guys can see my screen in the background here, and I'm pretty sure it's just www.scraprack.ca. Let's see what we come up with. There it is. So just scraprack.ca, and they're a distributor in Canada. And there's their website, and it's a little bit different looking than ours, but you can get everything you need right there, and they've got all the, that stuff dialed in for you, Kathy. So thanks for asking that. Sometimes I forget to mention it. Tina says, where should we put a small gift sample, which contains a journal box, a couple of pieces of paper, they're different colors on each side, about four by six sizes, and a few stickers that all, that all match. Um, I'm not sure if the when you say the journal box is like a flat piece of paper, um, there are different colors on each side, about four by six sizes, and a few stickers that match all of this. And it, it sounds to me like it might be a journaling like um, block, so not really three-dimensional, but a, you know, it's flat. I have all my journaling stuff in the front section in alphabets and numbers. I actually think of that alphanumeric section as tag titles and journaling. So anything like Titletopia from Creative Memories is up there, journaling templates, you know, the guides with the little lines on them. They're up there. Anything that's like a pre-printed um, 
card or embellishment that's designed for journaling, it's all right up there in the front. And that way, that's where I always go to find things that are to do with journaling. So in my mind, now you could have a journaling section in your themes as well, um, if that's kind of how your brain works. Because really the key is you want to be able to find it when you need it. So, But for me, I think of section one, alphanumeric, as tag titles in journaling. So that's where I would put it, if that makes sense to the question that you're asking. Can you print out the challenge of the week? You can. Um, it's just when you go back to the scraprack.com, um, you've got the download the PDFs right here, and then you would just have to download the PDFs and choose the screen that's got the challenge. And um, usually the challenges are on the follow-up email too. Um, and they're in the workbook. Now that I now that I say that, um, they are. They're in the workbook now. Like they're the last part of the workbook section. So if you don't have the workbook, email Joanna at customer service and she will send you an e a workbook. You can also go right here where it says um, use download the workbook, click here. I don't know if that's going to show up on your screen. Some stuff does. And then you'll be able to download the um, workbook and that has everything that we're doing. And at the very end of each day, it gives you the challenge for the day. So it's in the workbook as well. So if you haven't, um, done that, it's right here on the download page. Now, for some reason, um, depending on pop-up blockers and the kind of computer you're using and your web settings, your security settings, you might get a message that says this file is corrupt or something. Um, that's just, Or it could also be that you don't have the latest version of Adobe, um, which is a free download. And Joanna has written out sort of the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get that new version of Adobe. So if you're unfamiliar with that, you can email her and she will um, get you that information as well. Uh, <laughs> Lisa, please do the San Diego Del Mar Fairgrounds Scrapbook Expo shows. Uh, we may. I don't. We, we don't really have a decision um, for next year. I'm from San Diego originally, so I like to do that um, that show when we can. It's nice to go home. Christina says, "Will you be back to Manchester, New Hampshire next year? Probably not, Christina." Um, like I said, we tend to um, we tend to go every other year or every third year, depending. There's about 40 major shows. We used to do 22 shows a year, and um, now I now we only do 12 shows a year. So um, so that really kind of puts a hitch in our get along and sort of spreads us out. And some shows we can't get into. We didn't. We tried to get into Novi this year, and we. Um, didn't you know get our paperwork in on time and it sold out really fast. So sometimes we have tried to get into a show and we just didn't make it in. Candy says, "Are you ever at CHA?" I usually go to CHA at least the, the winter CHA every year just to walk the floor and see what new products are coming out that people are going to need help organizing. Um, but we don't usually do a booth at CHA. We have in the past. We just don't do it very often. Krista says, "Please do Sacramento in July." Brenda says. Uh, Walmart sells tiny Ziploc bags in the jewelry department. Kay says, oh, sorry, name of the person's email. You just want to email customer service. I'm going to print this and ship to all at the scrap rack com. Put workbook, please. Um, in the subject line. And then that's Joanna. So she will, um, so that should have gone out to all of you. So, and when she sends it to you, you don't need to respond back to her saying thank you or any of those kind of things because every time she gets something that says workbook, please, she just hits reply, attaches the workbook, and sends it off. So don't worry about sending something back to, that also says thank you because she's just going to send another workbook to you if that makes sense. So we appreciate your good manners, but um, don't worry about it. She'll send you the workbook and you don't need to reply back. Unless you don't get it, then you can reply back and say, hey, I didn't get mine. Christina says, what do you think about putting chipboard with the alphanumeric section? I think it's fine. It's, you know, obviously, chipboard alphabets, it just depends how many you have. Some people just have a few chipboard alphabets. I have an entire, like, 12 by, um, I don't know, it's probably 12 by 12 disorder thing. I'll put a picture of it um, full of chipboard alphabets. So it would be too much for me to put in my scrap rack. 
I could actually it wouldn't be too much, right? I could add another base unit and fill it with chipboard, <laughs> but um, it's more efficient in my little sorter thing. And to be honest with you, I'm not finding that I use it that often, so I may even have to do some purging there. Kay says CM has story box, which is a four by five and six by five paper with journaling boxes. Where do they go in the system? And so I probably, this was probably asked after I said that I would put it in the front and tag titles and journaling or alpha new, go in alphanumeric for me. But you can have a journaling section. Wherever your brain's going to think. Are you going to think to go under J for journaling or is it going to work better for you to have it in alphanumeric tag titles and journaling? Sharon says, um, <laughs> Sharon says, you won't be in New Hampshire next year. How am I going to help you out at your booth again? Um, you're just going to have to come to another show in the Northeast and to help us come out. That'll be fun. Sandra says, where did you get the corner table in your scrap room? I got it at Office Depot, and they were on sale last week, actually, but it was fairly inexpensive. It's lightweight and easy to move around, which is one of my things about setting up your room, is that once you start scrapbooking in your room, you might need to change it up. And if you get this permanent furniture and have permanent cabinets installed or whatever, then you can't reconfigure your room. But if you buy pieces that are flexible and mobile, then it makes it really easy to configure your room for different things, too. So um, I bought it at Office Depot. I forget what it's called. Joanna has a link to it, actually. So if you email customer service and ask for the link to the Office Depot furniture, she will email that out to you. She's been compiling a huge list of all the things we get asked on a regular basis. So she's got some quick answers there. Brenna says, just wanted to let you know I am a saver. I save things to use in layouts, travel tickets, and such. So you are testing my ways, and I'm hoping to complete the challenge you set forth for us. Thank you. Oh, um, and that's the DIY jewelry crafting section sewing. Um, I might have missed something there. Brenda says, Hobby Lobby also sells small Ziploc bags in a couple of sizes. And snack bags are a little bigger. And the last question of the day, would you put a little booklet of vellum titles and things in the alphanumeric section if it's generic? Um, no. I actually have I have those little books of vellum things. I actually have in the very back of my theme section um, a little section labeled WOW, WOW, or Words of Wisdom. And so there are lots of things that we come across that don't really fit a theme or event. Um, vellum, little vellum poems or vellum sayings or whatever, um, or these booklets that have a variety of things in them. So I have that WOW, that WOW section, and that's sort of where I compile all these things that are sort of um, words of wisdom or inspiration or whatever, but they're not specific to any theme or event. And so then whenever I'm looking for something for a page, I have everything together in that one section, and that's where I have my little vellum books. So that would be my answer to that. All right, ladies, I think that we are done for the day. That's the last question. So thank you so much for attending. Um, we will talk next week about, let me scroll down my thing here. I love having the website open behind me. It makes it so easy. Uh, we're going to talk about photo organization next week with a plethora of pictures challenge number four. So looking forward to working with you on that. Looking really forward to posting your Facebook um, to reading your Facebook post this week. I find them very entertaining on many occasions and very insightful also. So thanks so much for joining me. I will see you all or you will, I will, you will see my screen. That's what I should say. You'll all see my screen next week at the same time. So have a great week. Be really productive and um, I will talk to you soon.